Hi, this is Charlie Calvert, and this is an introductory video in HTML5 and CSS. It is meant for all web developers, but especially for non-technical users. HTML is a markup language. The syntax used to create an HTML document can be broken up into two broad categories. The semantic part tells what to render. The presentation layer tells us how to render it. The semantic part defines the content to be rendered, for instance, the text, and the presentation part tells us how the text should appear, what font to use, what color to use, whether or not the text should be bold, etc. We will iterate on this subject of the semantic versus the presentation layer uh, throughout the video, so it should become clearer to you as we move forward. HTML content can include text, images, music, video, Etc. So when we say that the HTML defines what content to render, that's what we mean by content. HTML is an open standard. If you want to dig into it much more deeply than I'm going to in this video, go to www.whatwg.org or to www.w3.org or to developers.whatwg.org. Okay. So let's start talking a little bit about the syntax that's involved in HTML5, just so we'll have a language. So when you see some syntax on the screen and hear me talking about it, um, you'll know what I'm referring to. Okay, an angle bracket, it looks like, like that right there, you can see it. And an angle bracket with a slash looks like that. So if I say the word angle bracket, I just mean what looks what we would call a smaller than symbol. If I say angle bracket slash, I'm saying smaller than symbol followed by a slash. Then we'll also talk a lot about tags, of which can be divided up into two types of tags, opening tags and closing tags. Opening tags begin with an angle bracket, then there are some letters that define the tag. Closing tags begin with an opening bracket and a slash, and then some letters that define the tag itself. So Elements and tags. HTML elements. <clears throat> Let's see if we can figure out what an HTML element is. Okay, so a P element starts with a P tag and ends with a closing P tag. A P tag is enclosed in angle brackets, and a tag starts with a smaller than symbol and ends with a larger than symbol. Begins with an opening angle bracket, ends with a closing angle bracket. Here's an example, a P tag opening angle bracket, the letter P, closing angle bracket. Now a P element <coughs> has a opening P tag, then some text or some other information, and then a closing P tag. Okay, so HTML consists of a series of elements enclosed by tags. An element is a thing designated by a pair of tags. A tag is the markup for starting or ending an element. Do you see the difference between a tag and an element? Okay, because we're going to use both words. When the element is referred to, we mean a whole chunk beginning with an opening tag going to a closing tag. If we just talk about a tag, all we mean is that opening tag or the closing tag, not the stuff in between. Okay. By placing content in a, fag, in a tag, we define the structure of a document, okay? So we give it some semantic meaning. We say text in an H1 tag designates a header. <coughs> so if you see opening angle bracket, the letter H, the number one, closing angle bracket, then that means you're about to begin a header, okay? Now, Technically, it doesn't even say anything about the size of the font that should be rendered or the color of the font. All it's really doing is saying we're about to begin a header. If you find an opening P tag, then that means what's about to follow is paragraph text. It's just prose. If you want to change the style of the tag, if you want to start talking about the font, or the color of the font, or whether it's bold, or whether it's underlined, then you should go to CSS. That H1 tag is really just a way of giving meaning, structure, to the content. It says, here's the content I want to render, and here's, um, give, here's some meaning. Here's a little something about it. This is a header. This is a paragraph, etc. The last thing I'm going to talk about before we actually start looking at some HTML is the doc type. So browsers need to render HTML and they need to know whether the document they're about to render is version 1 of HTML, version 4 of HTML, the XML version of HTML, or HTML5. And <clears throat> right here you can see an example of this very simple tag which means it's HTML5. 
that means, okay, this is HTML. That's what it is that you're about to render. In the old days, <coughs> we had a much more complex system for designating exactly which version of HTML we were talking about. And those tags look like this complex one down here. Um, I don't really use those old tags anymore. Um, there, you'll see them a lot. <coughs> but in my world, it's all about this tag right here. It's all about this tag here, which we call the HTML5 tag. OK, so here's an example of an HTML document. It begins by telling the browser what we're about to do. We're about to render some HTML as opposed to some XML or some PHP or something else. We're about to render HTML. We're going to start our HTML document. That's what this tag means. So that's our first real HTML tag. And then we're going to have some a head element in here. And this head element is generally not rendered to the user with one, and there can be quite a bit of information in the head element, but let's keep it simple here. Very simple head element only includes the title. The title appears as the tabs at the top of a um, page. So right here, these tags up here at the top, that's designated by this title, which is put in the head. Then the next thing we see here is the body, okay? And the body says um, that we're about to start rendering the body inside of our um, inside of our document. And you can see the body of this entire document only has one paragraph in it and says, hello, World Wide Web. So it's a very simple document, okay? Very simple HTML document. Then we close out the body we close out the HTML, or even more specifically, we close out the paragraph, we close out the body, we close out the HTML, and we're done. We've rendered the whole thing. Okay. So what goes in an HTML5? HTML is, consists of a series of HTML tags that give meaning or content to the document. An H1 tag says nothing about the size of a font, but only states that it is a main header. Now, why am I emphasizing this much? Because <clears throat> in the old days, people used to do things like put the words bold or the words italic or a tag that says I or a tag that says B that stands for bold and italic. And we don't do that anymore in HTML files. That's one of the big changes in HTML5 because that would be using the tags to describe how the content should be rendered. And that's part of the presentation layer. So the I tag is just mean to, to, to say that the text that follows is italic, so it's really considered kind of an obsolete tag. It'll still work, but it's really meant to be pretty much an obsolete tag. Instead, they give something with more semantic meaning. They've replaced the I tag with something called the cite tag, which says that the tag that's about to follow is a citation, and it should be in italic. And there's other ways to put things in italic sometimes. Okay, And you should, we're not going to dig into it right here, but don't do things like say it's bold or say that it's um, meant to be um, in italic. Instead, use tags like strong instead of um, bold or use tags like cite instead of I if you mean to designate a citation. We'll talk about that some more. Again, that presentation versus the semantic meaning in a document and why it's done is a tricky part of it. But you need to get it, start wrestling with that issue right from the beginning. Um, HTML5, there are many new features in it. Um, there's uh, features that work offline. There's features for displaying video, for a canvas element to draw animations on. There's drag and drops. All those things weren't part of HTML4. They're part of HTML5. So this is a deep subject. It's a rich language. But of course, in this video, all I'm going to do is tell you that much that the subject is of interest to us. There are new elements in HTML5. There's elements that weren't part of HTML4, article, header, footer, section, okay? Not the head element, header element. Footer section, there's a nav section. There's all kinds of new things that are part of HTML5 that weren't part of HTML4. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is CSS, but this is enough for one video. So let's just come back and follow this video with one that will start talking about the basics of um, CSS. So this is Charlie Calvert. We started talking a little bit about HTML and CSS. Thank you.